Merchantosh, I wanted to make a brief video to explain how I was able to communicate with and load software onto my shiny new Macintosh SE. I got this a few months ago. It's a model that came after the Mac Plus and before the Mac SE 30. Mine came with a 100 megabyte SCSI hard drive with about 75 megabytes available. The drive is probably an aftermarket model. As far as I can tell, this Mac is working perfectly. I plan to replace its capacitors later, but its circuit boards look pretty pristine. I did pull the battery out. It looks original, but luckily has not leaked out. It looks brand new as well. I had to do a double take when I saw the Made in West Germany label on it. It came with a Stylewriter 2 inkjet printer. Uh, not only is it still working, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that ink cartridges are still being made for it. I used it to write my 2020 Christmas letter, and uh, even the script for the show. There's something about this Mac that makes it fun to write with. I don't know if it's the simplicity, the lack of distractions, the pleasant keyboard action, or the proving glare that Steve Jobs' ghost is casting at me. I wanted more. I found an online repo of compatible games and software and desired to load up that mass of 75 megabytes of empty space. One problem though, I had no idea how I was going to get my new software on this tenacious toaster. I had another machine with a floppy drive, but I could not get it to format a disc that the SE would read. The disc is a unique beast that can work with both newer 1.4 megabyte floppy disks and older 400 and 800 K disks, but apparently it won't take just any disk. This machine has Mac TCP, but I have no Ethernet connector and no modern computer that would speak Apple Talk. How am I going to get these bumptious bits aboard this benevolent battle station? I ordered this thing, the Y Modem 232. It acts as a modem, but instead of communicating to a telephone line, it instead connects to a telnet server via a Wi-Fi link. I sprang for the deluxe version with a screen in case I needed to diagnose any issue talking to the device. I also got a Macintosh serial cord, which is important because the connection is proprietary. The Mac SE has two functionally identical ports you can connect to. One has a telephone label and one has a printer icon. I actually have the printer and Y modem plugged into opposite ports just because the printer was already talking to the phone port and I didn't want to disturb it and tempt the wrath of the printer gods. I then plugged the Y modem into a USB wall power supply and it started right off. I also had to make sure I disabled Apple Talk on the port that I connected the Y Modem 32 up to. I happen to have the Z Term terminal client, so I started that up and confirmed that I could talk to the Y Modem. The interface is like on old modems where you have to start every command with a T. After I got that working, I was ready to point Y Modem to a text server. On my Windows computer, I downloaded a program called YBridge to act as a Z modem file server. Link is below in the description. All I needed to do was fire it up and it started listening for a connection. On the Mac, I get the Y modem to connect to the PC's IP address on port 6464. Then pick the destination directory to save downloads to and I'm ready. YBridge has another functionality where you can actually get a command line interface for Windows, which is pretty neat if I want to do any remote work from my Mac. Back on the PC, I can start sending packages. The first is the Stuff It executable, which unzips packages in a SIT format. This is a popular format for packages. All I have to do is open it in YBridge, and then Zterm picks it up automatically. After that, I can download any old SIT I want, and then I unsit it and run it. Done! So, that's downloading in a nutshell. Not a huge Mac fan, but I am a fan of stuff that just works. The end!